As you grow older and wiser, and if you're a young listener, welcome. And I promise you this will happen to you. As you grow older, your thoughts increasingly turn to bank robbery. And I was just wondering, when was the last time you gave some serious thought to serious crime? If we call 0500... <laughs> Sorry, it's true though. 10.53.89, it's true. The simple truth is... There is not a living soul, Mother Teresa, I don't care who you are, you've thought about robbing a bank. You have. It's not a question of whether you have or haven't. You have. It's a question of how much serious thought you've given it. Free call 0500 10 89. The closest I've ever come to robbing a bank is this. A pal that I was at school with took me out for a beer one night. He was driving a Morris Thousand. And um, we'd been to the pub and he was driving me home. And for some reason, I started fiddling with the glove compartment, which opened. And in the glove compartment was just the biggest bunch of keys you've ever seen. And I said to him, what's this? He'd gone to work for Barclays. And he said, those are the bank keys. And I said, what, all of them? And he said, yeah. I said, what? Like, to the safe? And he said, yeah. And it was the way he said, yeah. It got me thinking because this was a Friday evening about 11 o'clock. Okay, so the bank wouldn't be opened until the Monday. And we were very close to a major international airport. And just for a nanosecond, just somewhere, up by the same bypass, for a moment I gave some serious thought, I did, serious thought, to robbing a bank. And so have you, haven't you? Maybe not robbing a bank. Maybe it was being a bit light-fingered in the post office. Or maybe you've actually planned something of brink-mat proportions. Well, what most people do is mitigate their plan by turning it into a novel which receives 37 rejection slips and that's the end of that. Or in the case of some writers, it's accepted and it becomes a book. So our urgent need to practice radical politics by resorting to serious crime is met and we never actually do it. Of course, if you have robbed the bank, or most especially, actually, since we're heading towards Street Beat Symphony, if you've ever been the getaway driver, we would... I can't tell you how much we would love to talk to you and hear about the expertise that's involved in being a getaway driver. What is the best car to get away from the bank in? Is it a production line model? It has to be something fairly ordinary, doesn't it? Because you've got to sit outside the bank whilst the deed is being done for about 10 to 15 minutes and look like any other member of the public. Free call 0500 10 89. Did you ever see the film The Thomas Crown Affair? Didn't you want to be Steve McQueen if you were a bloke or Faye Dunaway if you were a lady? Hollywood still hasn't got round to the idea that you can make a film in which the criminals win, even though we all want them to win. Have you ever seen any of the films in which Alan Rickman plays the baddie? Don't you want him to kill the Bruce Willis character. You do. Well, on the third time of seeing a movie, you really do. Did you see that movie in which Sylvester Stallone played a rock-climbing hero and John Malkovich, the guy from Third Rock from the Sun, played the baddie? You seriously wanted John Malkovich to get it over on Sly Stallone. So, of course, you want the baddies to win. And from time to time, you've planned a serious crime yourself. What do you need? What's your equipment? You need a balaclava? A torch? A kosh? Only for show? Only for show? A packed lunch? And a plan? What is your plan? And would you be doing it for the dough? Or would you be doing it for the buzz? Because it's a serious buzz, I'm told. Free call 0500 1053 89. I'm Tommy Boyd. This is Talk Radio. There's a good argument for listening. Please keep listening. Tommy's just had block paving put down in his driveway. I have. And it was very expensive. And short of robbing a bank, I was just had to keep working. So keep the numbers high. Keep listening. Call if you like. We're discussing bank robbery. Everybody, everybody, I'm convinced from the Prime Minister 
through to us. Has given it some thought, that's all I'm saying. Sometimes very serious thought. Free call 0500 105389. Mark calls from Blackpool. You're on talk radio. Hello, Mark. Hey, tell me all right, mate. I'm all right, Mark. Yes, yeah, so, um, uh, a few years ago, I was actually asked to, uh, to, to rob a bank by someone who worked there. What happened? Well, what it was, he, he was a friend of mine I went to college with, and he, uh, he worked in the local building society, and it was one of these that was joint with an estate agent. And he said, if I just went in, took the money, and went out, he'd do the rest. Now, was this a drink talking, or was this a serious well, this was a, proposal? Well, a conversation in college one day. Yeah. And uh, basically, he, he was going to turn the security cameras off, make sure the video wasn't in the, the machine. Uh, I was to walk in, take the money, and then he'll you know, give me a couple of minutes to walk away. So just be uh, calm and walk away, get on the bus. Yeah. And then he'd, uh, wait, he'd, wait, he'd wait, go wait, around and say that he'd just been robbed. Hang on a sec, get on the bus? He, he said, just get on the bus and, and go away with money. You, you, you were going to escape by bus? I was, uh, no get away car for me, Tommy. Well, how far did you take this idea? Uh, I did have to discuss it with him, but uh, I decided it wasn't a very good one. Uh, it wasn't all I needed really was for him to turn, and that would have been it. I'd have been right in trouble, wouldn't I? So yeah, I didn't really trust him that much. You see, the philosopher once said, even if one can escape a misdemeanour, one can never escape the fear that one might get caught. That's right. Yeah. So you know, if you'd done it 20 years ago, you'd probably still be thinking maybe that knock on the door is for me. That's it, you never know, do you? I've, I've actually told them a couple of grand in it for me, as long as I did that on a Wednesday, because that's when they have the most money in the till, so... Yeah, I suppose it's, it, it's like a lot of things, isn't it? You would weigh up how much money there was in it for you, well, the against, 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 the against, against, against the risk of getting caught, and, and how long you'd spend in prison. Uh, yeah, the thing was, I was a poor student at the time, and I also could have done with the money, really, but... Yeah. Uh, it was very tempting, but fortunately for me, I think, I didn't do it, my conscience was clear still. There was a lad round my way where I used to live who 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 ended up I think in um young offender a young offenders institute. Yeah. He invented a machine which he would go round and put it on the front of a cash point in right. the in the middle of the night. Right. right. And what it would do is it would eat people's credit cards. Right. Ha after they put their pin number into the machine. Oh right. Right. So then he'd go round and he'd collect all these credit cards right, yeah. with a memory of the PIN numbers, right. and then, of course, the unsuspecting people who were being thieved didn't know what had happened. He right. then used these credit cards, and he, I think he, he pulled down several thousand pounds, right. which, which, which was the bank eventually covered the losses, right. right? And, yeah, you just said, well, I must admit, my wife and I said, when we read about it, what a clever lad. Oh, yeah. You know, you do, don't you? Well, he said to me, oh, I just, I was say, like, he was 17 foot tall, he had pink hair, and, uh, and, he, and he ran away very fast with his gun. Mm. And here's me, I don't know, walking on bus. So I'd have got away clean. Do you think it works with the girls? Um, I don't that's a very good point. That wasn't really what I was asking. I, I have uh, heard, I mean, criminals have said to me that um, as soon as you mention to a, a young lady the fact that, you know, you've done porridge or, or, or that you're a bank robber, yeah. Apparently you're well in. Oh, right, right yeah. I'll try that one then, jump side it out, I think. It's as good a trick as saying you're a film producer. Right. Well, I'm not for sure, though. Mark, thanks for your call. We've got a Keith who calls from Halifax. Hi, Keith. Hello. Um, I've planned a bank robbery. Have you now? Um, it involves using a robot. Right. Oh, do tell. I think no one's ever done it before. Um, I think they probably will do in the future at some point. Right. Um, because if you put a robot into a bank, yeah, and you got a video link, yes, um, to the robot, uh, you can have this robot spinning around and to be fully armed, yes. Uh, you can speak for, via a link to the robot, um, tell it to hand over the cash, and uh, it could um, then just leave and fly away. Uh, you could get a check, you know, the check you, pack. Yes, yes. Have you cased a joint yet, Keith? No, I haven't done that yet. No. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's just something that's, that's probably going to happen to. That's on your to-do list, is it? Case well, a joint. Well, it's foolproof, really, isn't it? How could they catch you? When you go into a bank or a building society, do you find yourself looking to see where the cameras are anyway? Oh, even yeah. if you're not planning a road? Yeah. yeah, you do, don't you? One yeah, does. Because, well, it, I, I always find of, I look seem suspicious, so even though I'm not doing anything. Hmm. With cameras. 
Uh, have you ever stood in the bank queue and tried to act suspicious? Uh, actually, when I was at school, at school, um, I did uh, pretend to shoplift. You would. <laughs> 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 you would pretend to shoplift in the hope that you would be challenged. And, and I you... was, yes. And you were? Oh, yeah. How do you pretend to be a shoplifter? Well, you just act extremely suspiciously and put your coat over things. And... <laughs> <laughs> but you don't steal anything. No, that's really. So you're like the Irishman who goes into a restaurant, orders a meal, pays for it, and then sneaks out without eating it. <laughs> oh, that would be so weird. Have they ever said you're a funny boy? No. <laughs> I've enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. No. Free call 0500 1053 I doubt whether anybody's going to run out and commit a bank robbery as a result of listening to this programme, and I don't think they could ca get us for it anyway. I just thought it would be healthy to lay bare one other aspect of your private life, which you share with everybody else, it's just that you don't realise it. It's a comforting thing. You've thought about robbing a bank. Seriously thought about robbing a bank. Plenty of times have you seen yourself lying on your back on a Polynesian beach enjoying the fruits of your crime. Or, or going up to the hotel room with the woman that you commit the crime with and, and throwing all the notes up in the air as you fall back in slow motion on the bed. It's a very attractive business. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's got something to do with Robin Hood and the idea of getting one over on Big Brother. I bet you're half planning a bank raid now. Free call 0500 1053 89. Tony's on the line from London. Tony, you're on talk radio. Good afternoon. Oh, and Tom, I think you read the last book that last geezer just read. It don't work that way, mate. What happens? What happens is you do the job, you do the business, and uh, you get caught. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Nine's odds out of ten. Um, it's not romantic, it's not. There's only two sort of blaggers, there's... Wait, 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 what do you know about it? Uh, not a lot. I got caught. You're a bank robber? No, I'm an aftercare man. What, 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 what aftercare? I take care of the, uh, business afterwards, like the car, the bits and pieces. I did not know you could get a job as an aftercare man. This is oh, very yeah. interesting. <laughs> there's blaggers and there's people like me that, uh, take care of things afterwards. And unfortunately, most of us get caught. There's nothing you can say. I mean, it, it, it's not like the storybooks. Well, perhaps you're just not very good. Well, maybe. I mean, um, I wouldn't say to a hardened criminal, you know, that he wasn't I'm very not good. I'm a hardened criminal. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You've done porridge. I'm just an opportunist. Yeah, but you're still a, you're still a big time crook. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No. You are. What was the job then? Oh, I don't want to go to that, so I mean, come on. What do you mean, come on? You come on the radio, you say you're an aftercare man, but you're not prepared to, you know, blag the gig. What, what was the gig? Just a bank, a post office. Just a bank. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah. What do you want me to say? I, you, you're asking people about... Yeah, we're interested. Banks. Yeah, we're interested. What did you do? No, you're, talk, you're talking fancy there. No, it don't work the way you're putting it over. No, but we'll... <clears throat> no, you, you don't understand, Tony. I'm not recommending bank robbery. No, but, I mean, like, the last guy, I was listening to the last guy, I mean, uh, where he come from, I don't know. He, you know, <laughs> standing in shop trying to get caught with shoplifting, yeah. and the man's not well. No. What you're saying is that you're better than him because you've done, you've been to prison to prove it. No, I didn't say that. I said I'm a stupid because I got caught. Yeah, well, he's never got caught. Yeah, but most of us get caught. Well, he didn't. Well, he's done nothing. Well, exactly. <laughs> so who's stupid? <laughs> Me. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not as romantic as you might think it is, mate. I so, tell you. so, so when you when you when you offer the bank robbers aftercare, uh, what do you say? Would you like no, a coffee? It's, no, it's not. Uh, it's not like that, Tom. I mean, things have got to get rid of. Things have got to get lost, and things disappear. Right. And that's the way it is. I mean, I'm not a blagger. I'm just no. I'm the one that sorts things out afterwards. Yeah. Or not. Or not, yeah. How long did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? How long did you do? Two years. Two years. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. Never again. Yeah. Look, I don't know quite how to put this to you, because I do Go have on. a phone number, so I could actually put this to you off air, but um, I mean, have you seen any places that 
could get turned over. No, not me. I'm going straight now. Oh, I know, I know. So am I, so am I, so am I. But we all talk about it. All, all us straight people, Tony. We talk about it all the time. Have you seen anywhere? No, nah, not at all. We, you, you haven't noticed a bank or perhaps a jeweller's, I don't know? No, it's not, it's not my thing. I mean, Building society? To, there's only two types of blaggers, Tom. Yes. The egg cases and the ones with lots of bowl. Tony, it's nice talking to you. All right, mate. Free call 0500 103389. I'm Tommy Boyd. What's the time? Well, it's 22 minutes you need to know. Past four. The DHL Global Challenge. Meanwhile, I in another part of your brain, we're discussing the joys of bank robbery. John calls from London. John. Tommy, how's things? What's your plan? Well... Um, it wouldn't actually be okay for me to do, but um, <clears throat> if I could con convince my wife to do it, which is pretty hard, she's very honest. Yeah. Um, if she could get up in that gear that the um, the Muslim women wear, yeah. the uh, the all face covering, mm -hmm. body uh, mm -hmm. covering robes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and go in, there's there's no way that they could uh, ask her to you know reveal her face. You know how they say, please don't wear a, a, a crash helmet in in the bank and so forth. Okay, this is this is I like this part of the plan because actually a bloke could do that. Well, a small bloke could. I'm a little tall, little little big for that, but, um... Yeah, but nobody's going to say, excuse me, Mrs. Muslim lady, you're a bit tall for a woman. Well... So you're all right, mate. You could, but I think it would... You'd it's, attract, a it's a very good part of your plan. You'd attract suspicion, I think, if you did, if you're too big. Well, you'd have to go into the right place, wouldn't you? Because you, you, you don't get Muslim women dressed in head-to-toe, pillarbox black outfits uh, everywhere. No, I guess not. No. So in London, say St John's Wood. I'm sure you could do it in any. They couldn't tell you you wouldn't, you weren't allowed to be in there. No, it's a very good plan. But uh, you just have to get a lady, or I guess a, a, a small person, to to do it. Right. But generally, I was small. The other thing I just wanted to point out to you, if I may, is that it was actually John Lithgow, not John Malkovich, in that film. Um, oh yeah. And uh, and another thing was that that guy, that guy mentioned that he could get a robot to go into a bank. Yeah. Uh, there was actually a film made about 15 years ago in yeah. Australia around called uh, Malcolm, which yeah. did that very thing. But Can you imagine what good bank robbers, Hollywood screenwriters would be if, you know, we had to have McCarthy back again and they had to do a proper job? McCarthy? No, I was just saying, if, if screenwriters were out of work, what good bank robbers they'd make, because they have to plan so oh, many yeah. good heists, don't they, for the movie? True. You're quite right. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. But now, just going back to your plan, because this is how the criminal mind has to work. How would you get hold of one of these costumes? Well, it's just a matter of making it, really, isn't it? You just go buy the fabric and right. um, and uh, get well, get a some idea of how to make an outfit like that. Okay, and and at some point, obviously, whilst making your getaway, you'd have to dispose of this outfit. How would you do that? Well, exactly. You'd have uh, just a regular maybe suit, something that's um, you know fairly uh, inconspicuous on, underneath it. Yeah. And you'd have your shoddy as well underneath the big um, the big gown. Yeah. And um, and then you just whip the whole thing off when you got out around the alley. Excellent. Wrap the shoddy in, chuck it in the bin, and mm. jump back on the street with mm. your regular suit. And you'd also be guaranteed an appearance on Crime Watch because they wouldn't be able to resist showing this one. Absolutely. Thanks for your call. It's a great plan. Ideas for all serious criminals listening. We're pooling resources and we're asking our listeners for their thoughts on the ideal way to rob a bank. Peter calls from Rugby. Peter, you're on Talk Radio. Good afternoon. No word of a lie. Listen to this. Talking about opportunists. Some years ago I was studying in London and uh, I, was in, I, went, I was in Brixton, that's right. Um, I went into a building society. Anyway, this vagrant come in the bank and I took one look at him and I thought, well... He obviously ain't got no money. So he went in and he started holding the building society up. So he loaded his bag up, loaded his, bike, his bag up, and we all froze inside the building society. We come out of the buildings, I came out of the building society, and I started saying to people, move on, move on, there's somebody trying to rub a bank, rub a bank. Anyway, no one batted an eyelid. So cut a long story short, someone must have knocked the buzzer off because he come out of the building society and started running down Brixton Road. Now he probably got 10 yards down the road and he ran into two coppers who were running up towards the building society because they're 
possibly a hundred metres apart, the buildings are slightly in the police station. So as he bumped into the policeman, he dropped this bag of money. It was a green Marks and Sparks bag, and all the money started dropping out. So I started picking the money up. This is all in innocence, right? Yeah. So I picked the money up, and I held it up, and I said, I've got some of the money, I've got some of the money. So across the road, there were, like, three elderly black women. There must have been... My mum's age, in fact, they looked exactly like my mum. They shouted, run with the money, boy, run with the money, take it, run, run. <laughs> Tommy, let me tell you something. This is no word of a lie. Tommy, I put the money in my pocket and I bolted it. I went down Atlantic Road, up Cold Arbor Lane, um, across Acre Lane, and I caught, I think it was, a 2B or a 36 bus back to Victoria. I got on the top of the bus and Tommy... I was actually pinching myself to make sure that I wasn't sleeping or dreaming. And I stuffed the money in my socks. When I got on the tube, Tom, Tommy, this is no word of a lie, I turned the money out. It was 10 50-pound notes. Now, that was only 500, yeah. but it's a start. Now, I've told this story to possibly... To hundreds of people. I must have told this people to, story to hundreds of people over the last five, ten years because it's one of those things you actually dream of. If you don't yeah. dream of robbing a bank and getting away, yeah. it's to actually be involved in the proceeds. But Tommy, that was at what happened to me, and I'm not telling you a word of a lie as there was a God in it. If it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for the black women across the road going, run with the money, boy, <laughs> run with the money. Um, I, I don't know what I would have done because I picked up the money as if to say, well, look, you know, here's some of the, uh, some of the goods, here's some of the money. And as soon as those women told me what to do, mate, I bolted for it, Tommy. Peter, that is a cracking story, mister. And it's straight up, mate. It's a beauty. <laughs> right, Tom. Free call 0500 10 53 89. The spoils, well, the spoils of war. Finding money in the street. And what? And what? I, suppose, I guess you should have given it back. I'm sorry, but I don't care. This is the real world. I'm not going to issue a government health warning for that story. Free call 0500 10 53 89. I was walking down a London high street some 15 years ago when an alarm went off and a man came running along the middle of the road in an overcoat. He was aged about 25, I would say. And about 50 yards behind him was a copper who had taken off his hat to run faster and was really, really legging it, knees up this copper with those great big boots on. What makes them think that coppers can run fast in those boots? Well, he couldn't. But I gave chase. The copper was actually shouting, stop, thief. So I joined in, thinking that the whole of the high street would too, and there'd be about 400 of us chasing this geezer. Well, we did a right, because he did a right, and then a left, and I was fit then. The copper started to fall away. <laughs> and the bloke kept looking over his shoulder, and I kept ch giving chase, you see. And then he did a left into a housing estate, and then he did another left. And I looked behind me and I realised I was the only one. So I got to the top of the road he just done a left in. <laughs> to see how this... It's like your life, isn't it? You keep going because you want to find out how it's going to end. And I started this event in my life and I was going to finish it. So I got to the top of the road he just turned into. <laughs> and he was stood, stuck still, about 20 yards down the road, facing me, hardly panting. Big lad, about 6'1". <laughs> so... I stopped running and kind of stood and tried to look casual. <laughs> what else could you do? He just stood there. And I looked as casual as I could and then kind of turned and walked away. What would you have done? Free call 0500 10 53 89. We're planning a bank robbery and George has called from Edinburgh. You're on Talk Radio George. Hello there. Sir. How are you? I'm well, you? Good. But it's actually, um, it's a story about a friend of mine who's done this. It's, um, it's nothing to do with me. Uh, you know the big security vans that's what about? Yeah. And they've got the little box that you hand the money out? Yeah. Well, he was walking past one and uh, one of the guys had actually walked into the bank. So he waited for a minute or two and then he walked right across, tapped the, tapped the door, it opened up and the man inside handed him two bags. I mean, like, really? Really? Uh, really? Yes, that's what happened. That's what they do. You even do it now. I mean, if you see a security van at a bank, they yeah. tap the, the thing and the wee, yeah. the wee thing opens oh, and see. then the money comes out. Yeah. So he done that, yeah. tapped it, 
two bags of money. Yeah. Uh, he took it casually, walked up the road, but uh, fortunately, there was uh, an off-duty policeman across the road yeah. who gave chase, caught him, and he got seven years in jail. That's probably about fair, isn't it? How much had he got in the bags? Well, Did I we... didn't know because he still had them in his hand when he got caught. Yeah, but they didn't say. No, it didn't. I would have thought the sum of money, you see. The crime is the same, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. If there's seven and sixpence in the bags, as if there's 70,000. That's right. But presumably that's a right. prison sentence. Yeah, it's, a, it's a terrible. I think he had a lot of previous convictions for other things, though. Yeah. So I think that's why they made it such a heavy um, jail sentence. Well, the chap who listens to this program when he can, mm -hmm. his name is now Charles Bronson. Right. Um, he can't always listen to the show because sometimes he's in a steel-lined cell. Is and, it? And he, and he can't get a medium-wave signal through it. Mm -hmm. But when he does listen, he, he drops a line and tells me the only time he ever went on a serious robbery, what happened was they took the wrong bag and they got away with the guy's lunch. <laughs> and he got six years. I think that's the case. For a of... Yeah, seriously, for a round of sandwiches and three digestive biscuits. Yeah, uh, that's a case of what a shame. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you find yourself whooping for the bad guys when you watch a movie? Um, yes, but there's only one, remember a program there years ago, Sweeney used to do that, didn't they? They used to get away. The Sweeney? Yeah. Used to have a lot of crimes in there, but the... No, um, I, I don't think so. I don't think if you're, if you're making a TV show about cops or a film, mm -hmm. I don't think you're allowed... Well, the Sweeney done it in the 70s. ...to let the criminals prosper. Yes. Well, not prosper, but get away. Well, in that case, we would have been given little material in order to enable us to like the villains, because we, we liked George and what's his name, didn't we, in the Sweeney? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Come on, George! Yeah, yeah. Get the motor! All that business. <laughs> that's true, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I've, I've actually, I've, I think if you're right, I think everybody's thought of it. Yeah. But, um, it's just doing it. It's just, I even yeah. think if I'm on a plane, I even think about going up front and telling them to take me to Cuba. <laughs> but I don't want to go to Cuba, it's just... You kind of yeah. mentally rehearse all sorts of things, don't you? It'd upset them if you were on a plane on your way to Cuba and you wanted to go to uh, Scotland. Yeah. I think that would upset them. If you went on the Dallas tour, you know, the JFK tour of Dallas, yeah. and you found yourself on the window ledge where Lee Harvey Oswald was, uh -huh. would you find yourself not mentally rehearsing taking a shot? <laughs> I think you would. You would, you would wouldn't you? You would. I think definitely, Tommy. You would? Yeah. See, we're all the same. That's the point. That is the point. But but not many of us are stupid enough to try. No, because it, it, the, the the worst thing is jail. You couldn't sit in a cell. I could never sit in a cell. I would commit suicide. I couldn't do it. Thanks for your call. Helen's on the line from Harrow. Hello. Hello, Helen. Welcome to Talk Radio. We're planning a bank raid. Yeah. Like you do. Um, basically, you go into the bank. Yeah. With your guy, whatever. Yeah. And you get yourself some hostages. Maybe oh, yeah, about yeah. 12. Mm -hmm. You bring them to the back yeah. and you smash cameras, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you ask the police for a certain amount of money or you won't get the hostages back. Mm -hmm. And then, while the police are debating whether or not they're going to give you the money, mm -hmm. you go out the back door yeah. with money from the bank, thus leaving the policemen still... Yes. Trying to get you your money for the hostage. Okay, now what age? May I ask, what age are you? I'm 15. 15, okay. Is this something you dreamed up this afternoon, or have you in fact given this prior thought? Prior thought. You have, haven't you? <laughs> Marvellous. Why? I know. This, I, I know, I like money. I yeah. like thinking what I could buy with it. And the excitement. Yeah. And it's good to have an exciting life, isn't it? Yeah. And well. aren't, aren't so many adult lives boring? Um, some are. Oh, some are. you know what I mean? <laughs> You know, what would you rather be, okay, a seamstress or a bank robber? Bank robber? Yeah. <laughs> you would, wouldn't you? Yeah. Are you a social worker or or a bank robber? Bank robber, I bank think. Bank robber. Mind you, crime has changed. You don't hear about banks being done very often these days. Mm. For some reason, criminals tend to go into building societies. You've watched Crime Watch. No. Quite right. <laughs> quite, quite, quite right. You should be in bed. No, have you ever seen Pulp Fiction? Pulp Fiction. Oh, yes. At the beginning, they say that they'll, per they'll rob a restaurant, because yes. no one ever does. No. And there's so much money that you can get from the wallet. Very few people ever think like that. Are you planning a McDonald's heist here, girl? <laughs> Hi, Jack McDonald's, yes, with machete. Helen, thanks for your call. Thank you. Helen reminded me of, um, 
one of America's most famous criminals, a man called Michael Kenyon, who was known as the Illinois Enema Bandit. Now, you couldn't make this up, and I'm not. This is true. Michael Kenyon used to go into banks, hold them up, take people hostage, and administer all the women hostages an enema. He was eventually caught, but walked free because inflicting an enema on a woman, whether she wants it or not, is not a crime in Illinois. One of those pieces of information which then has you wanting to ask thousands of questions, such as, did he actually take up this pursuit simply because he discovered that administering enemas, wanted or unwanted, is not a crime in Illinois? Or was there a better reason if that one's any good? Free call 0500 10 53 89. We need more hardened criminals on this part of the show. Harry calls. He Hello. doesn't doesn't want to say where he's calling from. He's on the move. Hello? Harry. Hello? Harry. Hello, Tommy. Yeah, I, that thing you just said, that enema business. Yes. I thought you was going to say you finished up the act in it. You know what I mean? Yes. But anyway, yes. Uh, the hardest thing, really, the worst thing is, is this criminal bit, you hear all this, and, and they was saying, the hardest bit is getting away, the, the worst bit is getting away with it. How many, jobs, how many jobs have you done, Harry? Oh, a couple, three or four, you know what I mean? But yeah. the hardest bit is, when you don't get away with it, yeah. so you've got to do the bird, then you get the papers, that's when you start making the money. You get birds falling in love with you and things like that, and you start writing books, because you've got nothing else to do. You've no. got all the computers, don't you? I can't afford one at the moment. No. Because I'm traceable. Yes. Right? Yes. On the phone and it, they say, well, oh, boom. You know what I mean, but, mm. uh, mm. the art that we're serious about, uh, being a tea leaf, yeah. is, without robbing banks and all that, is, I used to go for antique stuff, you know what I mean? I know what you mean, From Harry. shops. Yes. Not from houses, because, you know, in the shops, you get it, it's all labelled, isn't it? How much it's worth, mm. whatever, mm. you just cart it away. Yeah. I've got a house, I was saying to your uh, lady on the phone, I've got a house full of antiques. Old bits and pieces, and they're driving me mad. Because mm. they're getting older now. Mm. And they, you know what I mean? Parties. Aren't we all? Harry, thank you for that little glimpse on the world of black and white Ealing crime. Nobody ever got hurt in those movies. Let's give the last word on this one for today to Bob who calls from Liverpool. Hello, Bob. Hello, Tommy. How are you doing? Good, you? Yeah, not too bad. The reason I was phoning, Tommy, what, what, what it was, I used to be a policeman a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was a policeman for four years, and, and what I do when I go into banks and post offices is I just sort of uh, have a look and think uh, and plan how easy it would be to sort of rob them. And like a couple of, a couple of different things I've thought of. I mean, I, I've, I've been in banks at lunchtime, and you know when the girls from behind the counter go for the lunches? Mm -hmm. A lot of the, a lot of the, these counters don't have double doors when you go back behind the counter. Right. So it'd be an easy thing just to sort of be hanging around at lunchtime, clock one of the girls going back in, walk in behind her, and as the doors open, just jump in behind the, behind the, the till and have a go. Mm. Um, another thing, there's a post office near, near me, only a little local post office, and he's got a big, you know when you put like a large parcel behind the counter? Yeah. And you have to lift up like the, 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 the screen at the end. Mm. He's got a massive screen that he lifts up, and all you'd have to do is take a large cardboard box in there, like, pay for the postage on it, where you can lift the thing up, and you could literally step through this thing and be on the counter again. So there, there, there's so many ways, just having a nerve and a bottle to do these things. Yes. And most, most of the time, people are so, their ideas are so ill-conceived and you, you haven't put any thought into anything. And that's why they get caught. Anyone with half a brain, you know, you, obviously there's always like luck comes into it, you know, there can be policemen nearby and so on. But there is, you know, it, it is possible to have a go, but it, it's, I think everybody thinks of what they do and how they'd spend the money and if they could do this, that and the other. Just, just another thing I wanted to mention, Tommy, just quickly. You mentioned Charles Bronson before. Mm. Um, I don't know if you saw it in the papers this week. Charles Bronson is supposedly bringing out his own fitness guide. Yeah. And there was a couple of little sketches in the paper. Yeah. Um, and one of them was, um, um, uh, what was it, jumping up and down on a paedophile is great for the, the thighs. 
Um, another one was um, uh, slapping uh, um, an old age pensioner's mugger, uh, slapping it 500 times across the face and it's good for the wrist and the forearms. Yes. And it was all things like that. Um, he's not uh, sure of a sense of humour. Yeah, he's obviously got a sense of humour. He sounds like a decent bloke. He is, Bob. Thank you for your call. Free call 0500 105389 as we turn to a transport issue of the day. Tolls, tolls on our road. They've got loads of them in America and it works there and we need more here.